Good evening. This is the International Black Summit podcast, and we're featuring Conrad Neblet out of Harlem, New York. Conrad is an IBS facilitator, entrepreneur, artist, teacher, student of transformational spiritual thought. He's a producer of some events. We're going to talk a little bit about those uh, dance parties that uh, he's been uh, doing. He's a graphic designer. He is a singer, actor, a, a great singer, okay, just, just so you know. And uh, actor, songwriter, poet, community activist, coach, and caretaker. So tonight uh, we're going to, and it's his birthday. So we've got several things that are going on simultaneously. So um, without any further ado, let me add you to the spotlight. Welcome, Conrad. Good to see you. Good to be here. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's good to be, good to be seen as yes. they say. So um, Conrad, you know, you've been uh, around New York and Harlem, and uh, we've known each other through uh, people of African descent empowerment group, um, all the different stages of the International Black Summit. So welcome, welcome, welcome. So thank glad you. that you're here and happy birthday again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So Conrad, what was your first experience with the International Black Summit. What was what what got you to the first International Black Summit event? You remember? Um yeah, I remember um Orrin Saunders. Is it Saunders or Sanders? I always get it wrong. Saunders, yeah. Saunders, okay. Orrin Saunders, he uh came to one of my shows I, I was performing at. And after the show was over, uh, he said to me, he said, Conrad, you know, I really would love for you to um, enroll in a course called the International Black Summit. And uh, he was so freaking passionate about it. I was like, oh, okay. But I did hear about the summit before, um, but I was unable to, to attend the very first summit, which was in 1991. The year that I did do the summit was 1992. And so I had previously done the S training and or uh, it later was called the forum. So I was familiar with the International Black Summit with people, Black people, people of Black African descent who wanted to uh, bring this transformational consciousness or thought to the Black community, like to really, really do that. And so, um, that was an attraction to me because it seems as though it's something that I was looking for and like Oren spoke and it's like, well, how did you know kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's how I um, got introduced to it. And, uh, and, and, what, and what would you, now you said that a little bit about that, that there was, the timing was, was right. So what were you looking for at, at that time? What, what what was that connection that you were looking for? Well, um, it just really was a continuation of me really being a commitment to the empowerment of, of Black people, of okay. the Black community. And I first got introduced to transformational thought or consciousness. I first got introduced, I thought at one point, it, I first got introduced by taking the S training, which is Landmark Associates, I think it's called now, uh, in 1980 is when I took the S training. But I really got introduced, introduced this thought, this different way of looking at life from National Black Theater. Right, right. It, I was in college and I went to do we went to this show called Softly Goes the World Men Whirlwind of it was such a long title I can't can't remember it but I remember the show 
Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh my God, this is so fascinating. And I didn't know why I was so inspiring. And it's, I, I had been to theater before because my mother, she introduced me and my father, they introduced us to the arts and we go to plays on Broadway, but I'd never experienced this before. Not until years later, like about a year later, I started to see many of the people who were in that cast at National Black Theater at the Landmark Center, volunteering as I was volunteering or taking a, you know, a seminar. And then I put it together and I was like, oh my God, this is fascinating. So that, I hope that answers your, your question. Yeah. And, and, and tell us a little bit more about the connection of Landmark uh, Education and the National Black Theater. Um, because there is a relationship, but I don't know that people know that relationship. Well, the, the, the relationship is, is National Black Theater, the International Black Summit, Landmark, and there's a host of other organizations and uh, people who are committed to this transformational thought, which is really looking at life in a different way, in a more empowering way, where you become uh, um, responsible for your life, where you're not looking outside of your life for blaming other people. You really look within yourself to see how you could um, move forward. And so the connection is the transformational consciousness. Like some other people that do transformational consciousness is, um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm growing it. Marianne Williamson. Okay. Uh, uh, um, and and didn't you do some work with Fernando Flores as well? Yes, yes. I studied with Fernando Flores, who was, who was from Chile, mm-hmm. and he had a three-year course called the Ontological Course, and it's the study of language. And mm-hmm. so I studied with him for three, about three or four years, and um, um, there's other people like, um, oh my God. Uh, Help me out, Glenn. Some other people that do transformational. Well, well, you did some work with at the National Black Theater with Barbara Ann Tear, who. Had... Oh right, right. Thanks, <laughs> thanks for leading, because because yeah, and Barbara Ann Tear had a course called the Tear Technology of Soul, and this was ontological an ontological approach to what is it to be a powerful black person to really look at the all aspects of black, you know, you being, you know, we have been colored, we have been Negro, you know, and there's, there's just, we're militant, we're, you nigga, I mean, you know, and some folks make cringe and say nigga, but it is a part of our experience because that's what we have been called. But, you know, when you embrace all aspects of, of, of that, a much, much more powerful person. Not to say that I am a nigga like how other people describe me, may, may describe me, but it is a part of the existence of the black experience. And so, it's a very, very powerful, powerful course. So given all of this work that you've done in discovering your blackness and your relationship to being black and the expanded view of blackness that that you were exposed to what what did that provide for you well it 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 provided ease and comfort because the media may perceive you we as black people uh, in a particular way but as I'm doing this work, I'm understanding that a media doesn't describe who I am. Like, you know, like, or society uh, doesn't have to describe who I am. Like I had to learn the beauty of my hair. Okay. Something that may seem simple to the general public is a very huge thing for black people, you know? And at one point I locked my hair, twisted, my hair and it's twisting, you know, it's twisting my hair in a natural way that black people's hair, our hair, it's coiled, it's tightly curled. And it's so that's why the, the locks grow long. 
So um, having learning this different aspects of me as a black person has me to navigate my life where I'm, I um, have more freedom. Um, I'm not better than anyone else. Black people are not better than anyone else. And yet the joy of appreciating how our music is, how our, you know, how we have created out of adversity, we have created extraordinary music. You know, we have created soul music, jazz music, blues, gospel, house music. Uh, I mean, it just goes on and on and on. Uh, uh, rock and roll, um, country music, to be honest with you. Um, like all of that, it, that learning these things, and it's been a journey of learning. Learning these things has supported me to stand stronger, to be stronger, because a lot of this stuff was not taught to me. And so focusing on and being a part of International Black Summit for 31 years, maybe. I started in 1992, I did the summit and then I became a facilitator in 1993. And it's the focus has been, what is it to be black? And so this, this study, now it has built on it's bigger than what is it to be black for me. But, and at the same time, getting to the root, getting to understand the beauty of all the aspects of being a black person is very important for me to be, to go beyond that. It's kind of like, you can't step over something, you step over something, then, you know, you have what you have. Um, I don't know what that, um, yeah I, yeah I don't either that's okay um so so you said you're you're a facilitator for the international black summit so mm -hmm. tell folks a little bit about what that is because the facilitation of the international black summit is a little different than facilitation a lot of other places and so how would you distinguish that uh to to someone who hasn't been to uh the international black summit at all um, I would say as a facilitator, we don't operate out of a manual. Okay. You know, we're not standing there with a script. What we do is we do work on ourselves. Like if, <clears throat> if we are the facilitator for, for a year, during the entire year, we are preparing ourselves. We prepare ourselves by using our lives. So it's very, very personal. And so when we get to do the annual event or whatever event that we're doing that we're facilitating, we, we are learning from experience. So we'll take and we'll take a deep dive uh, look at the various distinctions that we have created. Like some of the distinctions are like, there is no out there. Okay. which I, I kind of mentioned earlier, it's like taking responsibility, really looking over here. Well, what, how, how, how have I been uh, a support? How have I been, how can I say it? How I've, who, who have I been in the matter? Okay. As opposed to, you know, cause it's very quick to say, oh, well, they did and he said, and she did and, and, that does have value. I'm not saying that doesn't have value. I'm more important, I'm more, uh, um, it's more important for me to look within, to see how I could have played a part in whatever the conflict or whatever, the, whatever it is. So we deal with the distinctions, with the purpose of the, we deal with the purpose of the International Black Summit, which is to provide an opportunity for participants to bring into being their vision for the black community and the world. And so, you know, whatever course that we're doing, we really, really, really focus on vision. And if you don't have a vision, we'll engage in a conversation with you around, well, what is your vision? 
Because as in the Bible says, and I'm not a very religious person because I don't ask me to quote all of this stuff because I will not be able to do it. But I do know the Bible says without a vision of people perish. So vision is very, 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 very important. And you could springboard from there, from your vision. And we do, we do visionary work. So that, that's a little, little take on uh, facilitating. Great. So you mentioned distinctions mm -hmm. and distinctions are part of the tools that the International Summit uses and the facilitators of the International Black Summit obviously use that to demonstrate or to elongate or to you know, highlight um, areas for us to do that, that introspective work that you talked about. Mm -hmm. um, what, what's, what's, what's your favorite distinction? What's the, one of the distinctions that you use in your life quite a bit? Because you, you, you talked <laughs> about using this work as you discover, as you develop, as you look at um, being more productive, being more creative, um, expanding your looking. So what, what, what would be some of the distinctions that you use inside of that context? Well, I'll give you one. One that comes to mind is clearing. Clearing, okay. Like clearing is a space and also clearing is an action. So um, um, like, we are in a particular clearing, which is the International Black Summit. That's considered a clearing. Or you have um, uh, you have another organization that is a particular clearing. Um, Church, <laughs> right? It's a, it's another clearing, right? Right. School, <laughs> right? Right. Thank you. Um, and the, but the other part of clearing is, which is very very powerful, is. I know oftentimes what we do in the summit is that we clear to be present. And clearing is an opportunity to, like if we're approaching uh, a meeting and the meeting starts at 8 p.m. Like it's, you, you have an opportunity to um, get all the muck and the Maya out of the way, the stuff that's going on during the day that, you know, it's because a lot of stuff happens during your day. To get all of that stuff out of the way so that you can become fully present. So that whatever you're up for, whatever the meeting is, the, the agenda for the meeting, you become a clear vessel. That, and, and that's the intention. And so clearing is a very, very powerful tool. And I have used that in many of the other board boards that I've been on, uh, many, many different places. I constantly clear. I use it daily in my life. And it also is, is also meditative for me um, because I'm centering myself. I'm going within. And then when I'm that at that place, I'm an open vessel. It's like, you know, all things are possible. Got it. So, so that's clearing. Mm -hmm. um, any other distinctions that that you would say that are your favorite or you use quite a bit? Um, bump bump up against. Okay. Um, bump up against is when bump up against and trigger is another distinction okay when i'm in a situation and someone says something and it just takes me off my you know my off, center off your game off my game i can get triggered i'll, I'll use this Will Smith got triggered <laughs> at the Oscars. He was out of saw. He, I mean, I don't know what he was bumping up against, but he was bumping up against something because he was not present. He was in that whatever that trigger was, that anger, that rage, and the the value of trigger and bump noticing the trigger and the bumping up against 
is that you have better facility to interact in life. So he did not have any facility. He was, he was in it. He, he was just so far in his trigger and he went up and we know that he slapped uh, the brother and then he came back off and then he was like, even like even more, he was like, we don't do this, talk about my wife like that. Having the skill of observing your trigger could support you to stop mid, stop immediately and not get up on that stage and go to slap that brother if he was conscious of his trigger. So being conscious of a trigger is very, very powerful. And the more that um, I have learned uh, being uh, cognizant of my trigger, the uh, more I can, you know, um, be of service. Because I'm not in my mind or my anger, I'm in spirit and I'm centered. So that, that's the, the two that go hand in hand. Great, great. So I, I just want to let our listeners know. So we, in the International Black Summit, we use different words. And these are English language words that sometimes have other meanings. But inside of the summit, we use these words, clearing, trigger, bumping up against these distinctions. We use them to keep ourselves present so so that we're not out of our mind or doing something crazy that we want that we'll later regret so it's an opportunity for us to kind of stop the action mid action and look at where we are and what we're up to and is this really what we're committed to doing going forward so and, and and there are a lot of other distinctions that are that are part of the International Black Summit, so, but these are uh, a couple that uh, um, Conrad was present to, mm-hmm. and and I might also add that most of the work that we do is about keeping ourselves present, keeping ourselves focused and present, and Conrad talked about vision. You know, vision is one of a very important aspects of the International Black Summit, um, and it gives us purpose and it gives us action that's associated with that particular vision. And then we use the distinctions that we have to really keep ourselves on track, because in life, myself as well, you know, I, I get off track. I may get triggered. I may hear something somebody say something or do something that takes me out of my game, takes me off purpose, takes me out of my commitment. And so we use these distinctions to keep ourselves grounded and focused in the direction uh, inside of that commitment and purpose that we've generated and created for ourselves. And and Glenn, I just also want to add that um, as we are facilitated, we can facilitate like to hundreds of people and we're in the front of the room and we're facilitating and that trigger make a trigger may come up for me with something either how participant have participant has said something or something happens. You know, it could be like a, a wall falls down. That can create a trigger and you can get lost in the sauce. And, you know, but I have, uh, learn to use that distinction to address, to notice that I'm triggered. And then once I notice it, that's when I have the facility to get back present to my purpose for facilitating, you know, or when the wall falls down, like I will acknowledge, oh, everybody, that wall fell down. We all know it fell down. So let's just get that out of the way so that we can all become present. Because if I'm triggered, I'm sure if a wall falls down, everybody else is triggered or startled or whatever the thing that comes up for them. So it really, you know, it really is uh, creating the space of ease, you know, and so people can hear 
and be present to what we're up to. So I just wanted to, to um, add that. Well, that's good. And you also added noticing. Yes. So noticing is also another distinction. Would you yes. expound on that a little bit for, for our viewers, our listeners? Well, it, it, it like the noticing, the bump up against, and the trigger all seems to go hand in hand. The powerful thing of that distinction is seeing. Like, like it's being conscious. Noticing is being conscious. And if you're not conscious of something, it could just, things can just go right over your, over your head. Now, this, these distinctions of whether you're facilitating in the front of the room or you're facilitating uh, in another way, it doesn't always have to be in the front of the front of the room. You know, in the International Black Summit, we have different areas that we, you know, I do often do music facilitation and I've been doing it for years with the summit that I use the music as a tool to help forward the conversation of the International Black Summit because the music is not in necessarily entertainment. The music is, we have incorporated music in the International Black Summit into the, into what we do because it's an integral part of, about a black culture, no matter where we are around the diaspora. You know, you can go to Jamaica, you can go to Belize, you can go to your London, you can go to, you know, South Carolina, you can go to, you know, Africa, you can go wherever music is an integral part of the diaspora uh, uh, tribe, I'll call it diaspora tribe. And um, um, so, uh, so when I'm facilitating through music, I have to notice and listen very, very carefully as to what the conversation is. Because it, like I said, it's not about entertaining, using the music. It really is about, oh, the spirit will say to me, oh, um, uh, maybe a song like, it's not over between you and me. So it could be, we're talking about, um, um, we're pressing on, let's keep going. Or um, another song maybe, um, ain't no stopping us now. So we could be in that conversation or heading towards that conversation. And the music will open up the space in a way that is so powerful. And, um, uh, and you yeah. know, so. Yes, I, I would I would add that it's uh, purposeful. Yes. So, so the music actually is part of the listening mm -hmm. inside of the noticing. And one of the things about noticing is that you're like an observer. Right. So you're actually observing yourself inside of the communication, the interaction, whatever's going on. So it's almost like you've taken yourself outside and you're now down looking at yourself inside the interaction that you're going so that you now, again, can come back to being present to what your vision is, what your purpose, what are your commitments? And, and is this action that you're taking consistent with that? Yeah, so yeah. you get, so you get to, you get to bunk, bounce up, uh, bump up against all of those things going on that normally take us out of being present. And yeah, so and it's, it, it's, it, it can happen at like this. And, to, you know, so the doing the rigorous work of these various distinctions is very important because it's like learn, be, new learned behavior, you got to keep at it. And, but the tools are very, very powerful. Those distinctions are very, very powerful, but it doesn't come overnight. You, you know, it has to be some rigor and repetition and keep understanding and keep learning and keep, you know, uh, ex, you know uh, just keep at it. And once you do, um, it, it feels like magic. It may appear as though it's magic, and it is magic, but but, the, but it is really, we're constantly listening in so many different ways, not just what the person says. Sometimes it's listening beyond that. You know, there's some, sometimes there's something 
that a person will say, a participant will say something, and it's there, you may, you may hear there's something else that's going on, and you may ask, you know, you may ask the question, is this something else going on? So it's very, very um, exciting. Yeah, that, that, that brings to mind permission to interact. Yeah, because, there's another one. Because as a facilitator, you also want to kind of check in with people and find out what's going on with them. Where What are they listening to? Because right. uh, we're listening, we're listening and hearing something, but are they listening to the same thing or not? Right. And so we begin to 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 um, relate to each other, and and the thing, you know, the the thing that you talk about, the the magic that you talk about, for me is really about us connecting as human beings. You know, um, mm -hmm. I know that I have this notion from time to time that I'm separate. But the truth is that we're all connected yeah, and yeah. being present has you get to that connectedness that's available. And, and there are, for me, the, it's very powerful to notice when we're connected and we're, you know, going down the same path, the same lane, we're going down it together, different perspectives, mm -hmm. different come froms, but but with the same uh, end goal in mind, and we get to work together with all those different angles to, to make things happen. Absolutely, absolutely. Great. So, so before we go on, is there anything else about facilitating that, that you want to tell somebody who has not uh, attended the International Black Summit? Um, I don't know. Um, it's just, I just, what, what I will say is that the International Black Summit has been in existence for, we're going on 33 years, I believe. Yes. This next year, we do it once a year, uh, the first weekend of August. And um, we've been, we've done 32 and we're up to 33 coming uh, 2023. Um, it is different every year because we're listening where we all are at in the moment. Each year it changes. Each year we have a different concern. Like these last three years have been COVID and how we have been uh, dealing with or not dealing with or you know, stressed out about or find joy in, you know, like we have gone to different um, aspects of of this whole new era that we're in. And so the summit is really an ongoing organic conversation, really. And it is um, sometimes, you know, people will come, you know, like I was, I had done the summit in 1992. I was there like almost every year. And then I took a break because I was traveling as an artist. So I went and traveled and performed and you, you can you know ask me some questions about that later on um and um then i came back as being an active facilitator but i was always facilitating in my life in all aspects of what i was doing and you know what i'm saying so um that's what i would, would say good and, and and conrad spoke to it earlier but also each year, the training that we do as facilitators to prepare ourselves, we usually have a declaration or an inquiry that we're engaged in on top of all of these different distinctions that we're working with ourselves with. And this year, uh, the declaration that we're working with is as I become present to I am, what is it to rest in the I amness? So that's a inquiry that 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 we're looking at, that we're unfolding, and and the other thing I'll say, uh, Conrad said it. Each year is different because we're looking, we're listening, we're listening to space, we're listening for who is in the space at the time inside that conversation, inside of the training that 
the facilitator body has done throughout the year. And then we get to, to, um, to look to see. And, and, and I'll add this, the thing about that's so fascinating for me being a facilitator is that I'm learning just alongside of you. I, I'm in it. I, I'm not giving you anything. You know, um, there's, there's nothing that I have to offer you except myself inside of the participating. So we're participating together, even though I may be at the front of the room or the back of the room supporting the facilitation, we're in it together, discovering together as a body what's possible. So it, it, it really is a pretty exciting event to know Again, because we don't have a book, there's no manual, but all we're doing is listening to space, um, which um, to me is very African. Mm -hmm. You know, sitting around and being together, listening for what is what is what is present. You know what what you know being conscious to being what's present. So Conrad, I'm going to ask you this. How has the International Black Summit and being a facilitator helped you with music? Because as a singer, um, you're, you know, you, you, you're out there as an entertainer, you're, you know, the, the creative juices. So tell us a little bit about how that's supporting you in what you do in life. Well, um, Music is one aspect of my life. Sure. Um, it's a very powerful aspect of my life. And I shared as being a music facilitator of the International Black Summit. But uh, um, the, before coming to the summit and I talked about National Black Theater, I was in a program that Barbara and Tia created called the Entrepreneurial Artist Program. And at that time I got I made a declaration that I was an entrepreneur and an artist and fused the two that I am not like starving artists never made sense to me, you know, it's starving. Like, well, I don't understand that, but I struggled because what I was told coming into the industry, music industry that, you know, Either you do, you know, you, you just perform, you don't do the business part, you know. But I went to college and majored in finance and business. And um, I was not in uh, pursuing to become an artist, a singer. I didn't realize until my last semester that someone said to me, you know, Comrade, why don't you take a, um, a uh, you know, nice fluffy course, you can, you know, once you get towards graduation, right? That last year, that senior year. I said, okay. So I looked through the, through the manual and I saw that there was this music class. It was music 101, vocal 101. I said, I'll try that, you know, nice and easy, breezy. And I took the class and the, the, the instructor said to me, so Conrad, you have a nice voice. And I was like, oh, thank you. And, you know, I thought she was just being nice because she's the instructor, you know, and I'm the student. She says, no, I'm very, very serious. I think you should take it seriously. So um, it's interesting when you get into something, when something is supposed to be, it will take you. So it took me, spirit took me and, and um, that right before we graduated, two of my friends, we went to school together, were getting married and they knew I was taking this course. So they said, Conrad, will you sing in our wedding? And I was like, oh my God, like what? Please. <laughs> so I did. And the first song I ever sang publicly was uh, Unchained Melody. And, and I, in that moment, and everybody else that was there felt something that I had never experienced before. It was beyond like my Conrad, 
sickness, you know? And um, I felt it in my body. Like I felt it, I didn't know to call it spiritual, but it was a spiritual experience. And from that, it just kept building, kept building. And then, cause I was working in a corporate environment. I worked for AT&T, New York Telephone and, you know, and then at some point I had to go, I had to leave. I had to pursue this drive that was inside of me. And this drive was to become an entrepreneurial artist, an active entrepreneurial artist. And so I stepped out in 1991 and I have not worked a nine to five since 1991, pursuing a vision um, that, uh, what, what, you know, Spirit said to me, step out. And I did. And I was taking care of <clears throat> along the way. It's, it was some rough ups and downs, but I've always been taken care of. It fascinates me. It's like I, like I can't even like describe it on a linear, in a linear way. It, it, it is, I mean, so many gifts just come the way and I've, you know, traveled around the world performing and in, in ways that I was like, now how did that, after the afterwards, like, now how did that happen? So, um, and I'm, I'm clear that the, um, the transformational consciousness of working with the summit and working with uh, National Black Theater and Landmark and, this, and Fernando Flores and on and on and on, like that has uh, had me to be a different type of performer. I became a producer because the things that were, were before me were not satisfying. You know, it was kind of limited. So I just started producing events and um, producing my, myself. And those things were successful. It's like, wow, this is bizarre. This is like bizarre. And then um, uh, another part of music, as you know, that was me as a singer. And then at some point, I created this organization called Together in Spirit. And Together in Spirit is a dance party. And it's a place where you come to release and let go on the dance floor. It's all in the same, like it's the same line, you know, release and let go. Spirit, you know, is the foundation of all of the things that I have been doing. And so I would provide this dance party and it was, um, not was, it still is, because I still do them, um, where people come and hear the classic soul, R&B, uh, classic soul, house music, the classics from the 70s and 80s, dance music. And it's uplifting. And so I would hire DJs to play this uplifting music. Sometimes I would hire a live performance. I've done like a whole lot of uh, creative things around it, but the intention, and I had a, uh, at every, every party, there was an altar and the altar, represents the elements of life. You know, we had the candle there, we had water there, you know, at the altar. I would bless the space. Every party that I did, I blessed the space. And the altar is the symbolic uh, uh, symbol of all of that, of a blessing. So people would come on, and it was every Sunday for years, people would come and bring flowers to the altar, or they would bring the gifts to put at the altar. And, and it just was amazing. People would come from ashrams and uh, Buddhist temples and uh, um, from church, from other clubs that they you know, hung out the night before and they would come together in spirit. Just was amazing, amazing experience. And, um, um, what I find in music is a very, very powerful, to, another powerful tool. And we, we oftentimes uh, with black music, um, I, I, you know, other cultures have taken 
well, it appears, I'll say it like this, it appears as though they have taken our genres of music and ran with it. But you know, I've learned over time is nobody can take something from you unless you let them. So it is a beautiful art form, um, this dance music, soulful dance music, house music, some people call it. It's a beautiful art form. And, you know, I've had experience with someone who said, well, you know, music doesn't have any color to it and all that kind of stuff. No, no. It is, it is a part of the African American experience, you know, and, and a lot of the songs comes from different of the diaspora because there's Afro beats in there. Uh, um, there is uh, reggae sometimes will come in. There is, you know, and then there, there's also um, some other genres that are not black would be played at the, at the party. The foundation is really a, a, a celebration of, of um, black culture. Yeah, yeah, I, I, you know, somehow I'm, I'm still left like that, that's not a, that, you know, there's so much more to it for me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, I, I've had my, my cousin from Sweden come and, and party. I've had birthday parties um, at, but but there's something it's not just about the dancing right. it's the space that you provide that is vibrant that is um freeing that is um i i, I i'm almost like i'm trans what's what's it transfixed into oh. another space of being inside of the people the beat and the people the movement and the you know, all of the action that we are, you know, we, we, you know, the international, for, for those of you who are new to or haven't heard about the International Black Summit, we've been all over the world. You know, we've been to Africa, we've been to um, Brazil, we've been to, um, you know, actually different places in Africa, not just one place in Africa. Mm -hmm. um, we, we've, we've been to uh, South America, we've been to the Caribbean. Central America. Central America as well so but there's something about me that has me vibing you know I, i'm getting in touch with something that that is inert that that i may not even be present to and so when you're at these 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 um the the dance experience sometimes it's, it's kind of like almost out of body experience that's occurring. And I know I'm not the only one <laughs> that was having that particular kind of experience. So it's not just dancing and it's not just a club dancing, but there's some kind of space that, that is created that has me go beyond where I could even believe or know. And it's the dancing and it's a, almost like a trance kind of a thing that it, it, I'm, I'm glad that you, you you said that because it just brings me back to what I provided was a clearing provided a space for people where they can connect where they could release and let go they could raise their hands they could close their eyes they could dance by themselves they could dance with another person I mean a lot of stuff is going on, but it really is a place to be, to, to experience being free. And it happens to be on the dance floor. And that, hap that can happen in so many different places, just that I happen to uh, uh, get drawn to, because I have been dancing since the 70s and haven't stopped. And one person said to me, well, oh, I don't do that stuff anymore. Kind of like, you like, like, you still do that? Like, that's kind of like, you know, for young, when you're younger. No, I will dance till I drop, till I die. It is, a, it is a, an extraordinary release. And dancing to a certain type of music that taps in, that tap, taps you into your own spirit. It's, you know, it's like when you hear the tonality, you hear the vocal. You hear all the, the sound level, you know, all of that plays a part. 
but clearly I, I provide that clearing for people. And it, it is nothing better. It is like better than sliced bread. You know, it is like to experience people rejoicing. It, when they in church, they do that. When you go to an ashram, they do that by chanting and stuff like that. You know, that, that, that resonates it becomes bigger than our minds. You know, it's just a very, very powerful experience because, and, and, and I see that it's a, um, you know, when we're going through challenging times, having those type of experiences are very, very important. So that's why I will continue to do get together in spirit when the spirit says it's time to do them again because there is a need. And so I'm looking to find a location to do it again because you know, of what we've been going through and what we're going through now, so. That's great, that's great. And so what else have you been up to, Conrad, that you'd like to share? <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 I just said that I'm looking, I really but, wanna do Together in Spirit in Harlem. Mm -hmm. I live in Harlem. My, um, I've been here since 1990. Um, I purposely moved here to be a part of the new renaissance. Uh, I was born and raised in Mount Vernon, New York, money earning, Mount Vernon. <laughs> and uh, um, my um, parents were born and raised in Harlem. So they would always speak about the grandness and the greatness and the renaissance and the da da da, -da. I mean, you know, I was just, because I, I was a, I'm an old soul. So I would always stick, sit underneath them to listen. I always was intrigued by it. And being young, we would always come back and forth to Harlem because my grandmother and my aunts and uncles still lived in Harlem. So I purposely moved to Harlem in 1990 because I wanted to be a part of the new Renaissance. And so I want to, I'm committed to bring the, uh, that experience of dance back to Harlem. I don't know where it's gonna be. I don't know what time it's gonna be, but I know it shall be. And it is, Harlem is known for when my parents were talking about Harlem and going to the Renaissance and the, and the, uh, uh, the different clubs that they would go to and do the Lindy Hop. And, but, you know, they were physically doing that, you know? And I wanna see Harlem, I wanna see the world, but in particular right now, I wanna see Harlem dance, rejoice, release and let go. So that's one of the things that um, I'm up for right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm retired now, like I say, I'm quote retired. And, and it's like interesting because it comes along with kind of comes along with the age of me being 60 today being 67 so grateful so grateful because my many of my peers have not not made it to 67 and um I don't not I do not take it for granted I think it's a phenomenal thing I live a blessed life um, and, but the retirement, I'm, I'm now in a process of creating what is retirement to me. Because I have not lived the traditional life. So a retirement is not going to be a traditional way for me. So I, when you ask me what I'm doing now, I'm listening for what's next. I'm listening of how I could be of great, greater service at this point in this time. So I cannot say to you concrete, I'm doing blah, 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 blah. But I am, I am um, in that space, that open space, you know, of listening, like, so Spirit, what is it to me? What, what is it that you want me to do or how to be now? And um, it's just, it's a, it's a, um, it, it, when I've been in this space in the past, sometimes it could be a little frustrating because my mind wants to go to do, do, do. 
you know, like you asked me the question, what am I doing now? Right. And I'm not there. I'm in listening as a vessel, as a vehicle. What, what, what will you have me? How would you have me to be of great service to humanity, to my community, to the world? Excellent, excellent. So as a newbie, you know, I, I just met you and, and you uh, wanted to tell me something about the International Black Summit. What, what would you say to me? Ask the question again. Uh, I'm talking and you'd like for me to do the summit, but, but you wanted to tell me a little bit of, uh, about <laughs> what, what would you say to me um, about the summit? Well, I would first say that the summit is open to people of Black African descent. Okay. That that's one of the requirements. Um, and our commitment is to empower, to be an, an empowerment to the entire world. But this particular aspect of the summit, which is the annual summit event, is for people who identify being people of Black African descent. And we have gone around the world and which I have learned a lot that, you know, um, there's been people who look very white, you know, white complexion that identify with being of black African descent. And it was a learning experience for me because I was like, well, no, you, you white, you know, but, and then they shared their, their, you know, experience and be like, got it. So who are we? Who am I to say that you uh, cannot be participating in the International Black Summit? But if you can, if you acknowledge and know that that is your part of your background, your culture, then we open we open our arms, you know, to you. Um, it is a conversation, um, and it's about the empowerment of uh, Black people around the world, like literally. Um, and we gather together and we, under, we, we begin to understand our different cultures, our, our similarities and our differences. So because you identify as a person of Black African descent doesn't mean that, you know, we all, like I'm, my <clears throat> father's uh, father was born in Barbados. My father was born in New York. My 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 uh, mother's father uh, mother was born in the south, and so I have both Caribbean and Southern influence in my life, and so you 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 know you being of Gu Gu Guyanese, Guyanese background, yeah, you know um, I'm not sure of the other. I think Guyanese and something else. Asian. And Bay Bayesian. And Bayesian is a part of my, my background. As well. My dad from Barbados. And <clears throat> so just looking to see, see me as a Black person, we are so diverse. We are so, um, oh my God, it's just so much our rich, rich culture. And going around the world, engaging in a conversation around what is it to be a Black person? What is it to be Black? You, I mean, I have learned it's not this anymore for me. It is so much, it's, it's bigger. And, <clears throat> you know, so one of the things is that if you're doing the summit, you have an opportunity, whether or not it's all virtual or it's on site and virtual, you are going to meet Black folks from around the globe. You're gonna engage, you're gonna hear uh, their experience. Like they may uh, interpret things one way, like we were in uh, Kenya and I tell this story often that <clears throat> that was the first time we went to Africa. That was in 1996, I believe. Somewhere in there, yeah. Somewhere in there, right? <laughs> um, <clears throat> and we asked the, we, 
we ask the participants to go to their, on their dinner break and, and um, take on what is it to be black, to engage in that conversation. And I remember, you know, and I got my interpretation, you may got another interpretation, but I'm just sharing mine, right? Um, <clears throat> so they, they came back and I noticed that the energy in the room was like intense. We just didn't know what was going on. And then we had people to go to the mic and say, share what did they experience during their dinner break of what is it to be black? And a Kenyan, uh, uh, Nairobi, she's from Nairobi, she got up and shared. She says, I am not black. I am Kukuyu, I am Maasai, I am Nair Nairobian. Uh, I, I am African, I am not black. Well, and there's another sister that got up and she may be on the call and I can't see everybody's name. But she, she was from Compton. And mind you, this is my interpretation. <laughs> she got up and you know, came all these thousands of damn miles and you're gonna tell us you ain't black? Well, the games began. And what showed up in the long run was we got to see how we are connected, but that we had differences. So in Kenya, there was no distinction black. They were all black, <laughs> you know, they were all same color. Now they had some tribal stuff going on, um, but the distinction, what I really got clear, the distinction black was something that was created in the States as, uh, uh, for us to, to you know, to, to uh, experience our magnificence, our, you know, specialness, our uh, love for ourselves and our culture. And I got, I, I, I didn't, before going to Kenya, I did not have that. I did not understand that. So traveling, going to the summit in different places, the traveling will have you to connect with different people of Black African descent with different perspectives. But it is that, that through line that we have that connection around the world. And that is what is very fascinating to me, that we have that, that connection. But it takes a while to get to that. So I hope that answers your question. It does. It 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 it, uh, it does. And uh, any, I, I'm going to read the declaration, and I want to just tell people a little bit about the some of the events that occur. Is mm -hmm. there anything else that you'd like to say about your experience with the International Black Summit, either as a facilitator or a participant? Hmm. Um, the most, the part that I really love about the International Black Summit, and there's many parts, but there's two, two of them that really I, I, I want to speak to. One is after the sessions are over, and we go to dinner, we at the bar, without the relating, the relativeness, you know, us connecting and, and, and really getting to um, commune with each other, you know, um, is everything to me. And, you know, during these three years of COVID, We've not had that physical communing. And I miss, really miss that. And I'm grateful that we've had Zoom to be able to connect in some way. And it's amazing what we have done in, in the midst of that. So that community connectedness, and sometimes we'll start be at the bar on the piano, we're singing. And, but you know, it's just like, wow, how I miss that so, so much. The other part is, um, and I'm starting to feel it, is when we do our spiritual 
uh, uh, I'm drawing a blank of what we, we, we call it, is when the music facilitation does a Sunday spiritual, uh, I'll say spiritual gathering right now. It's probably called something else, but I can't remember offhand. And we honor all religions and traditions and we provide that space on early Sunday morning. And it is, it has been different every time. Like I remember there was one time when um, we, somebody wanted us to do a choir. Mm -hmm. So we went, certain people volunteered and Within an hour, hour and a half the most, we created the most beautiful, harmonic experience. And then we had Reverend Bird with the word. Henrietta Bird did a sermon, or I don't even want to call it a sermon because that would be limiting what she did. She took the declaration which Glenn is about, which you're about to share. And she spoke the declaration and then she brought in some spiritual aspects to it. It was, it was art, it was spiritual art. And then the music of how we, you know, layered and did the harm. It was just like really, that was only one of them one year. And every year is different, but that we take the time on part of the on part of the annual summit event that we take time to acknowledge spirituality is everything to me. I got it. It is. It, it, it is an experience, and 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 it's all created in the moment. It's not uh, something linear. It's not something scripted. It is it is listening the space and generating, you know, self generation. So I'm going to take a moment to share the declaration. Read it, and we're going to come back, Conrad, before to to close up. But I'm going to read the the declaration of the International Black Summit. The declaration of the International Black Summit. We declare ourselves, our community, and all communities whole and complete. There is nothing to do except be. We assert that we are responsible for generating community as possibility and distinction. We listen for and grant being to the possibility and creation of unpredictable results. Our conversation of about and for those of African descent is one of power, self-generation, abundance, responsibility, unity and integrity with the possibility of being. We stand for the expression of our spirituality, ending the murders of our men, women, and children, building economies responsible for funding our community, maintaining wellness of being in our bodies, providing human services, establishing nurturing relationships, altering the conversation of who we are in the media, empowering our youth. We declare that our community manifests itself in the world as a contribution in the transformation of the universe. Atlanta, Georgia, October 7th, 1991. And what we do, we usually start our events and end the, our events saying the declaration and we say today's date. So December 4th, 2022, to the north, to the south, to the east, to the west, above, below, and within, and wherever people of Black African descent reside, 
and then we take a moment of silence. So let's take a moment of silence. Thank you. So in that moment, we get to get ourselves present, bring ourselves back to what we're up to. Um, as Conrad mentioned, we have an annual summit event, the first full weekend in August. So that's the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We also have prerequisite programs. We have a community course that we do. And oh, by the way, we also, we have a youth summit, which is from eight to 17, ages eight to 17. We have a young adult space from 19 to 35, and we have an adult space. So the, which is 18 up. So as a young adult, you can actually be part of that conversation or you could be in the adult space and we do some different things in the young adult space because we one of the things that we learned when we especially when we went to Africa is that most Africans consider your youth up until you're 35 and so we had to look at that and to and to and to see what they were pointing to in terms of your growth and development. There's still some things that you're trying to figure out, trying to work out your career, you know, being independent, being on your own and so forth. So, so the young adult speaks to that space specifically. So we've got lots of things. Tonight is uh, the podcast that we do. We also have um, summit shares and we have summit gatherings that we do on Sunday nights at 7.15 to nine o'clock um, as part of our ongoing conversation, deepening distinctions, looking at different conversations that are attractive to people of black African descent. So um, Conrad, anything else for you before we end this wonderful session? Hmm. Let me see. <clears throat> Especially being that this is your birthday. My birthday. My birthday. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, you know, like I, I shared earlier, and I have been doing this transformational work since the end of the 70s. And this is 2022. 2022, yes, and, it is. And it has been um, uh, such a um, great tool to navigate my life. And um, I was reflecting, as I was reflecting on my birthday, I was reflecting on how, where I have traveled to, you know, like I've <clears throat> performed in, and, and some was performing, some I've facilitated conferences. I've been in Australia, in Spain, different parts of Spain, uh, different parts of Italy. And as you know, the Italians, they kind of make a difference between Sicily, Sicily and Italy. And I've been to both. Um, I'm, I'm kind of drawn to, I love, uh, uh, Sicily. It's a beautiful, earthy place. And one of the places that I love the most that's beautiful is a place called Terramina in Sicily. And it's a city on a mountain and it overlooks the Mediterranean Sea. Oh, nice. Like, and have a cappuccino, a cup of, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and a Prosecco, and you'd be all right, you know? Uh, <laughs> and Paris, you know, performing at the Paris uh, Opera House. Gennaier, I may pronounce it wrong, but, you know, takes a village to help me out with how you pronounce it, but it, it uh, just uh, unbelievable, the journey of where I've been and, you know, Milan, um, um, 
just in different parts of the states, you know, um, it is it is like I, I, what I recommend to anyone, I don't care what age you are, is to travel. Is to travel and to see outside of your immediate culture. And traveling could be going from, like if I'm in Harlem, traveling could be going to Chelsea in Har I mean, in Manhattan, another part of Manhattan, um, but out of the state out of the country, like explore um, the vastness of life, the beautiful cultures. And um, it has, and I'll just say as a testimony, it has supported me to be a whole and complete human being. Cause I got, you know, every place I go, I get to see another aspect of myself. It's like, wow, this is fascinating. You know, um, I took a road trip in June. I love to do long distance driving. And I just got so like, enough with this COVID stuff. I was gonna say another word, but enough with this COVID stuff. I just got my car and um, I had, a, I did a house, house swap with someone and I was in Miami beach and uh, the person in, came here to Harlem. And then I came up, up coming back, I went to different cities. I got to visit my cousin who was on the, on the um, call tonight, cousin Dighton. And um, I went and hung out with him and his new wife and, and, and friends of mine that are there. And I went to different museums and I, I, it was like three or four weeks that I was gone. And it was in, within the United States. And I learned so much just from that tour. You know, I went to, you know, it's like I learned a lot of, I went to a lot of uh, black museums and um, fascinating. Underground railroad spots. Yes, underground railroad spots. Um, and I called that, that trip, I called it the, um, Drawing the blank of what I called it, but uh, oh oh, before I be a slave, I be buried in my grave, a roadway to freedom. You know, and it was because um, there was some stuff that it, it was not easy to digest going to these different museums, um, and um, but there was such joy in what we created in the midst of of what we have gone through. And um, so that's that's kind of like um, pretty much it. Um, I appreciate, you know, the interview. Uh, it's been my pleasure. It's been yeah. my pleasure. And we, we've been knowing each other for so many years. That's right. So many things together, so many great things together. Um, thank you for being here. For the folks, our website is Black www.blacksummit.org. So if you'd like to find out more information about the International Black Summit, to join us for any of the events that we're having, uh, certainly the annual event and or any of the other events that we'll be offering, um, check us out. You can register on that site or get more information. And the declaration that I read is available on that site as well. Again, www.blacksummit.org. Thank you, Conrad. And for those of you who are live in Zoom, stay tuned because we're going to have a live session as we end this podcast. Thank you all for being part of it. We look forward to it. Conrad, again, thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you. Thank You're you very welcome. much.